Welcome to the New York State Museum, and welcome to this virtual tour of our Tonalism exhibition, Tonalism, Pathway from the Hudson River School to Modern Art. And I'd like to start right here with this, this painting by Carl Linden and talk a little bit about what tonalism is, because it's a kind of, no pun intended, murky term. Uh, tonalism became popular in painting and works on paper after the Civil War, at a time much like our own that was full of upheaval and uncertainty. Uh, the rise of industrialization and urbanization, reconstruction, and so forth. And these paintings were kind of a solve to that time period and made people uh, looking at them, we hope, um, really gave them a sense of, of solace at some level. And this, is, this painting style in general does not focus on spe the specificity of place as earlier artists had done with the Hudson River School. The paintings tend to be um, quite subtle in color and favor oftentimes light at either end of the day. Uh, and the idea of tonal really is the subtlety of the color in many of these works. We're going to take a little stroll through the galleries and see some of the works in the exhibition, see the galleries themselves. And I'm pleased to report that we'll be able to extend the exhibition once the museum um, is reopened, thanks to the generosity of all of our lenders. So we come in to the first gallery, and we have a kind of prelude where we have works by um, George Innes and one work by James McNeil Whistler. And these two artists are generally considered the uh, forefathers of tonalism. Innes started out, like many of the artists in the exhibition, as a um, Hudson River style painter with tight paint handling, very detailed paint handling, not brushy at all. And also, he liked, uh, he liked pastoral subjects, not quite the grandeur of the Hudson River School, so leaning towards uh, more um, quiet views. And he was very influential by, um, on the other artists of the tonalism um, style, and Whistler was the other one. And Whistler, who really has no ties to New York State other than his influence, um, really espoused the idea of art for art's sake and getting away from, again, this idea that something had to have a, a story behind it or focus on a specific place. And then from there, we see a, a group of artists in the exhibition who actually started painting like Innes in the Hudson River School style. Artists like Jervis McEntee and Homer Dodge, Homer Dodge Martin, and we see that these artists evolved towards a more tonal style later in their careers. It appealed to them as well. And one of the things that's often associated with tonalism is a sense, perhaps, of, of spirituality. And these paintings do invite contemplation. You have to imagine them in Victorian houses, uh, on rich brocade walls, for instance. Um, notice that some of their frames are quite elaborate, but they really are quite subtle in their overall, um, in their overall paint handling and subject matter. As we move through the galleries, we did focus on artists in, from the state of New York here. Many across the state. We have artists like Alexander Wyant, who had homes in Keene Valley in the Adirondacks, as well as downstate. We have a huge group of artists from Woodstock uh, who worked in the village of Woodstock, including Agnes Richmond and Bolton Brown. Uh, we'll, we see them um, as they extend, and the artist who started us off, Carl Linden, who is also seen at the far end of the gallery here. And you can see as, you, as we span the walls here that these paintings are generally um, quite, for lack of a better consideration, quite quiet. And they are um, often quite 
solitary. We don't see figures in them, although occasionally figures do appear and occasionally figures are seen in tonalist works. We see that different, not only different times of the day, but different times of the year, we don't see bright sunlight. These are not impressionist paintings with the bright sunlight, um, often late morning to early afternoon. Um, but we do see lots of uh, wonderful work with, with cloud cover, with sunrises and sunsets, reflections on snow, uh, and so on and so forth. It's nice to be quiet. <laughs> and, and just on a personal note, it's, it's such a treat to be in the galleries again. And here we see a group of artists where we have quite a, a little bit more color in their work, but also still subtle. What we tried to do in this exhibition was not just feature artists who are traditionally associated with tonalism, but also some that might not be traditionally associated with tonalism. If we look, for example, at the work of Walter Lant Palmer, he's often lumped with the Impressionist painters at the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century in this country. And here we can also see him stretch the imagination a little, but see how he would fit into the tonalist aesthetic as well. And most of these artists that we see in this gallery really spent their careers as tonal artists or tonalist artists. And just what exactly do we mean when we say tonalism to modern art? Tonalism was often considered a sort of uh, old-fashioned style in the 20th century. In fact, at mid-century in one of the early surveys of American art, it was, it was, it was relegated to a footnote and called something that had pretty much disappeared. Uh, but if you look at, for instance, the treatment of the color, the interest in the subtlety of the color, uh, as well as the, um, the differences in surfaces and how the paint becomes a really important part too in a very discreet way, uh, mostly, although not always. Um, and we see that these artists who are interested in the, these, this kind of ex exploration of Whistler's concept, or not exactly his alone, art for art's sake, that this is something where you're getting rid of this tie to the necessity for subject matter and the exploration of the subtleties of these color relationships, these relationships that sometimes uh, border, if you will, on abstraction. sometimes with very thick paint, and sometimes with much more subtle paint application. Tonalism was not solely a, a paintings phenomenon. We see tonalism in other media, and it's important to think about this, and sometimes I feel it's actually easier if we start with um, something subtle like a photograph, a black and white photograph, and con con consider it as tonal because it is. And then if you see a photograph, you can kind of get the idea that, oh, it's a subtle exploration of the relationships of the tones. Then you, see, you can then apply it to something that's um, quite uh, more colored, if you will, full of color, if you will. Um, for instance, in this photograph, uh, soft focused photography, you can see the relationships, the subtle relationships of the different um, ranges of blacks and whites and grays. And we see this also in printmaking and in watercolor. If we take a look again at another, um, in this case, um, a Charles Warren Eaton watercolor, the subtlety of the watercolor 
itself lends itself to the tonal style, the very gentle light um, peeking through in the background, the very quiet interior of the woods. And you get a sense, um, hopefully, looking at these paintings, these works on paper, watercolors, prints, you hopefully can get some sense um, of peace. We see this again in prints. And here we've cleverly, we've cleverly um, included a Whistler etching and um, we've paired it with two works by Marjorie Ryerson. And the subtlety of an etching and the tones in an etching, the choices of things like paper help with the tonalism. And uh, we loved discovering new artists or artists that fly under the radar. Whistler is certainly a well-known artist, but somebody like Marjorie Ryerson is not. And she's uh, working in, she was not only a, a printmaker, but she's also a, a painter who worked in New York City in, um, even though neither of these have that subject matter, worked in settlement houses and depicted children there. Um, she also, she, her, she's also best known um, as the uh, compiler of Robert Henry, a great teacher, Robert Henry, and leader of the Ashcan School, his book called The Art Spirit. As we end the exhibition, and in this case by another woman artist, by Ava Watson Schutze, and these are figurative and can show you how tonalism can also be used for figurative works as well. And in, in she um, also was a painter, uh, had ties to Woodstock too, uh, but her photography is another one of those great revelations. Um, so we, what we tried to do here was not only uh, present tonalism in this exhibition, but also present uh, the artists who were not necessarily completely well known and find those hidden jewels in collections across New York State that could be brought out and seen in a context that they hadn't been presented in before. And as I mentioned bef um, that the exhibition will be extended. We hope that when the museum opens we'll be able to tell people exactly when that is, uh, but we will be able to see this exhibition again. I do hope that people will come to see it in person because these works are very good for your soul. And. Um, if you are interested, on our website there is a link to the brochure that we have written for the um, exhibition itself. So thanks so much for joining me today on this virtual tour and I hope to see you in the museum when it reopens and in the meantime contemplate works of art. <laughs>